everybody welcome to the video it's friday july 16th and we're breaking down this massive 14 game slate that we have over on DraftKings today and i'll tell you what it is good to be back i did not like this little hiatus we were on yes the all-star break is fun to watch the home run derby peter alonzo mashing baseballs in course field you got the all-star game but you know i just missed the daily grind of fantasy baseball so i'm glad to be back and we have a really good slate to break down on our day of return Plus, there was no sports on Thursday. We did have one baseball game scheduled, the Red Sox versus the Yankees, which is always an exciting game to watch, but then it got canceled due to COVID. And so we had absolutely no sports. The finals weren't on and, you know, no baseball either. So it was, it kind of felt like the 2020 COVID era. We had absolutely no sports going on whatsoever. So I did not enjoy the minor PTSD I got from that. I'm sure you guys felt the same thing as well. But if you find this video helpful in any way possible, Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's a free and easy way to help show your support to the channel. If you want to follow me over on social media, you can do so using the handles in the bottom hand corner of your screen. And if you want to help support the channel over on Patreon, get access into my entire spreadsheet, which has all the numbers you'd ever want on here, including projections, my optimizer, rankings, cheat sheets, status sheets, Discord committee, all that fun stuff. You can find it down in the link down below. And I do cover other sports as well. And last but not least, this video is sponsored by Prize Picks. I'm sure you guys know what it is by now, but if you don't, it's Daily Fantasy Sports Simplified, just you versus the projection. As of right now, they are kind of working a deal for you guys, so you can get a free money bonus up to $100. It's a free instant deposit match, so if you deposit $100, you get $100 right back, or you can do $50, $20, whatever you prefer. Just use code CPEN when you do that. You can find the link down in the description below, or you go to prizepicks.com and use code CPEN and tell them I sent you. But I think that's it for the plugs for the most part. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as per usual, we'll start with the pitchers and then move on to the bats. And we have a laundry list of good pitching options here. Some of them cash viable, some of them tournaments, some kind of both, some are kind of long shots here, but all very interesting options. And since we were kind of on a bit of a break, obviously a lot of good pitchers are rested up. So we're going to see quite a few good pitching options today, but some teams aren't really throwing out the best arms today. So we still have plenty of good bats. Plus we have a course field with the Dodgers there. And I will say good things happen when the Dodgers do go to course fields. So that's definitely going to be a team to target, but we'll save that for the offensive portion of this video. But we'll start up top here with Kevin Gosman, 10300 bucks. He's our most expensive pitcher on the slate, which might sound kind of weird, but Kevin Gosman's been absolutely flawless this season. Like, I have nothing bad at all to say about Kevin Gosman whatsoever. Matchup versus the Cardinals, it's kind of so-so for the most part. Yes, they got a couple decent bats on up, like Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado and a few other good pieces, but... Nothing I'd really be too concerned about here with Kevin Gosman. If we're looking at his overall numbers in the season, really nothing to complain about. Yes, his XF and Sierra over a run higher than his ERA, but it's because his ERA is below two, like 1.7. That's a, it's not as good as it gets in the area department unless you're Jacob DeGrom. And there's nothing to complain about with a 3.3 XFIP. Like, that's still a fantastic number. I mean, that's nothing to complain about. That's only worse than what Robbie Ray and uh, Brandon Woodruff on this slate, which those guys have obviously been phenomenal pitchers so far this season. Over a 30% K rate, allowing a batting average of less than 160. Doesn't really allow too much hard contact, below 30%, about a half a homer per nine. The Cardinals this season versus righties. I mean, they haven't been terrible by any means, but it's nothing you're going to be too scared about. Like, yeah, they don't strike out much at 22%, but only a 148 team ISO, 296 OBP, 293 Wobin, 86 WRC+. Plus. I think Kevin Gosman should be just fine, and only a 3.3 implied team total totally gets him, and a pretty heavy favorite. So just raw points-wise, Gosman will grade out as one of the better pitchers on the slate. Now, that's not to say I, don't, I think he's a must-play, because I don't think he's a must-play at that price point, because I feel like we have similar upside for guy, with guys like Brandon Woodruff and Robbie Ray at lower price points, specifically Robbie Ray. I think he's pretty much the best pitcher on the slate. We'll talk about him in a little bit, but when you use Kevin Gosman, I mean, you can use him in any format, but I'd probably lean towards tournaments because I want to fit some Dodgers in my lineup today, and they're very expensive. So if I can save $1,000 my pitcher and probably get the same kind of output, I'll just save the money with Robbie Ray. But obviously, Kevin Gosman's a good projection play tonight. Dropping down to Brandon Woodruff, 9500 bucks. So he's been really good this season, but the past couple of starts for Woodruff have been pretty average for the most part, kind of been sitting in the teens, but we know overall he's been a fantastic pitcher this season, but there will, there's a couple of things I do worry about in this matchup versus Cincinnati. First off, it's one of the absolute worst places to pitch. It's a very hitter-friendly park, especially in the summertime when the weather's you know a lot hotter and the ball starts flying out. And The Reds do have a few guys that can hit right-handed pitching very well, especially Jesse Winker because he has been mashing righties this year. Nick Castellanos for him versus lefties, but he's just been killing it overall this season. Tyler Naquin was a, he was on fire start this season versus righties. That's definitely cooled off quite a bit, but 
Still, I'm not loving the spot here for Cincinnati, but there is some strikeout upside, and Woody's obviously been great this year. Only two ERA, XFs below three, Sierra's in the low threes, around a 30% K, he doesn't really walk too many guys. He's another guy that can limit the hard contact, just like Kevin Gosman. And actually, if you compare their numbers, they're actually very, very similar in a lot of categories here. Like, they have the same exact whip, the average is very close together, the Woba is only .03 off. Same with the ISO. I mean, they have very similar numbers this season. Both limit the hard contact, not a half a homer per nine. It's just the matchup for Woodruff is obviously a bit worse here, and plus the park that he's pitching in. So, a couple of things to be concerned about, but I do like the price decrease because we typically get Woodruff in the 10K range. So, the fact that he's only 9500 bucks does seem like a pretty good value here. So, I think he's playable in both formats today, but. Again, my favorite pitcher, it's going to be Robbie Ray, 9300 bucks. He's coming off a game where he had around 40 fantasy points. And he was on an absolute fire, and he gets a really good spot here versus Texas, and I would imagine the Blue Jays are going to be one of the highest-scoring offenses on the slate today. They get a really good matchup versus Jordan Lowes, a guy that I typically like to pick on quite a bit. So as long as Robbie Ray doesn't get blown up and turn into the old Robbie Ray of the past where he walks eight guys a game and gives up a bunch of homers, because this season he has done anything but that this year. He has been an elite-level pitcher, and I feel like he should be around where Kevin Gosman is priced. So the fact that he's not just kind of screams value to me. I realize he's still a little bit expensive above 9K, but... He's definitely been worth it if you look at his numbers this season. ERAs in low threes, XFIPs right on par with that. Sierra's even a little bit lower. A really, really good 32% carry, which is the highest of any pitcher we're going to talk about here. And I got about, I think, eight pitchers listed. So, I mean, he's been great this year. The one bad thing about Robbie Ray is he will give up some pop around a 200 ISO this season and 36% hard contact rate and close to two homers per nine. So, that's obviously a little bit scary, but I'm not too worried about power as a lefty versus the Rangers because. I know they're not striking out a ton versus left-handed pitching, but in the power department, they've definitely been lacking. Like, only a 23.5% carry, that's a lot better than what they had last year, but only a 145-team ISO, walk rate below 7%, 306 Woba, 93 WRC+. plus. I think Robbie Ray can easily get, like... I would. I know they're not striking out a ton versus lefties, but Robbie Ray's strikeout upside has just been absolutely phenomenal this year, so I would say... Probably 8-plus strikeouts. I can't imagine he's going to get knocked around too much. 4 and pot team total here, but see that mainly just coming from the bullpen so i'd like robbie right a ton i mean rob points wise he could easily be the highest scoring pitcher on the slate in the fact that he's not the most expensive pitcher on the slate i like that quite a bit so robbie ray pretty much my sp1 today and he's where i'd go in cash games if i am spending up but he's probably going to be pretty chalky but i do think it's for good reason and then dropping down to kind of the sp2 range although it's kind of like fringe sp2 because my head is pretty expensive and morton's in the mid ak range here but you know, playable as an SP1 or SP2, depending on what kind of offenses you play today. But Kenta Maeda, 8700 bucks. The one thing to keep in mind for this game is that it is scheduled as a doubleheader, which means this will be a seven-inning game, which could work well for Maeda. Now, if this was a full-on nine-inning game, I would be absolutely in love with the Minnesota Twins offense today because if you look at their prices, they are dirt cheap. But that's probably the reason because it's a doubleheader. But anyway, Maeda, past couple of games, have been very good for him. Early in the season, was kind of looking like hot garbage, but he's definitely turned it around. He's getting a little bit better, and I can definitely buy in on a good matchup here versus the Detroit Tigers, 3.5 implied team total against him. And looking at his numbers this season, out of all these pitches we're going to talk about, he's kind of got the worst numbers of the bunch. But the most recent starts are definitely encouraging for me. He has given up some power this season, but he's gotten the strikeout rate up to 24%. It was in the teens, so it's definitely going in the right direction. And good matchup here versus the Tigers versus righties this season. They've been pretty bad for the most part. They've been really, really bad versus lefties, but versus righties, a little bit improved this season, but they're still striking out over 26% of the time, only a 154 team ISO. So, hit the Maeda. Feels maybe a bit expensive here, but I think he is viable, especially... Like, if you can go the full seven innings, you do get a bonus for getting a complete game over on DraftKings. So, you know, maybe seven innings. I mean, maybe it'll be attainable for Kenta Maeda. He's not really a guy that goes super deep into the game, so I'm not really going to be counting on that. But it's, you know, it's possible. It's in the cards for Maeda. And, you know, 8700 bucks that could definitely go a long way, especially if he can pick up the win. Then dropping on Charlie Morton, 8500 bucks. Another guy that's been pitching pretty well recently. Like, earlier in the season, he kind of screwed me a couple times. But the guy's been pitching very, very well. The strikeout rate... Close to 28% at this point. Xfips at 3.4. Not really giving up much power whatsoever. He's only at 102 ISO giving up, which is even lower than Kevin Gosman, right on par with Brandon Woodruff. Good ground ball rate. Doesn't allow much hard contact. Doesn't allow a lot of homers. And the one thing I don't like versus the Rays, yes, they strike out quite a bit. So that's why I had Charlie Morton on here, just because of the strikeout upside. I believe they're close to, what, 27? Yeah, 26.1% versus Reddies. But the thing is, 
they have plenty of power versus righties too. A 170 team ice on a 103 WRC plus. So it's kind of a risk reward matchup here for Charlie Morton, but at his price point, I think he's viable in any format. So I like to strike it upside here for Morton, but it is a little bit scary. But only a four implied team total doesn't make me feel like too nauseous about the spots. So I think we can definitely play him here. Tyler Malley, 8,200 bucks. Good matchup here versus the Brewers. They will strike out quite a bit. The problem is, same with Brandon Woodruff. No, I'm not saying Tyler Malley's as good as Brandon Woodruff. I'm less concerned about Woodruff than I am Tyler Malley, but his Malley's a guy that can you know, kind of struggle with walks and he gets in, in some trouble. And he just faced this team, so and he was got, he got into a lot of trouble in the first inning. If you guys watched that game, he kind of got out of it. Ended up with like I don't know around 15 fantasy points, which didn't kill his day. But 8,200 bucks here. The Brewers are a team that will strike out quite a bit versus right-handed pitching and. I mean, their team isn't really, like, outside of a couple of guys, that's a pretty horrendous lineup for the most part that will strike out quite a bit. On the season versus righties, they are walking a lot, but a 25.5% K rate, WRC plus is below 90. It's just, I hate the park that he's pitching in. In Cincinnati, one of the best parks to hit. So, a little bit scared here. I think he's only viable in tournaments. He's an underdog here, obviously going up against Brandon Woodruff, 4.5 implied team total against him. The Reds bullpen's not very good, so you have to expect some of those runs, or how Vegas is kind of considering it for that, but... I like his strikeout upside, around a 30% K rate, which is good. It's just, I don't know, he's a very risky reward matchup here, but I think he's viable in tournaments. Then Julio Arias, 7800 bucks. So he's pitching in Coors Field, so this is definitely more of a dart throw here, and he has had some iffy games this season, but this is a good matchup versus the Rockies. Like, their lineup sucks. Like, you know, back in the day, Coors Field, you could always play the Rockies, you can always play the other team, but the Rockies lineup is just bad at this point. So, you know, no more Nolan Arenado and a couple other guys are gone at this point, but... 7800 bucks is a good price tag for a guy like Julio Arias. Like, I've played him close to 10 k this year. Now, he is really cheap. Obviously, it's because of Coors Field, and this is the absolute worst place to pitch. And we just saw, you know, balls getting mashed, <laughs> like, over All-Star Weekend, especially in the Home Run Derby now, obviously, because, you know, they have batting practice guys throwing the baseballs. Not that that pertains to anything, but this is a great place to hit. You got the elevation. It's warmer in Coors Field at this point of the season, so... It's definitely a very risk-reward matchup here for Yuli Rice, but the guy's got a good K rate, sitting at around 20% this season. Doesn't really walk many guys. It's solid and not allowing a lot of hard contact, only at 30%, but the ISO is close to 180 over a homer per nine. So it's definitely a risk-reward matchup here. Versus lefties this season, you know, it's just a pretty pedestrian lineup for the most part. Like, I am not scared of the Rockies here. There's a couple guys, maybe like Trevor Story, that could give him some issues, and but... I mean, overall, I think it's 700 bucks. I think he's worth the play in tournaments. Then dropping out of Andrew Heaney here, he's only 7400 bucks. I could see him being pretty popular. Maybe the chalk SP2 today in cash games because if you roster Robbie Ray and Andrew Heaney together, you're not actually breaking the bank. And you can still fit in a couple of Dodgers if you do that as long as you find some value bats, which there's plenty to talk about today. So it's on these big slates, we get plenty of value bats. And DraftKings has made it way too easy to roster whoever the heck you want this season. So if you just go the Robbie Ray, Andrew Heaney route, the couple of lefties here with high strikeout rates, they do give a, a little bit of power. But I think relative to their matchups, they are going to be excellent plays today. Andrew Heaney, good matchup here versus the Mariners. Team total below four against him. And the thing we like about Andrew Heaney is that he can get some strikeouts. Now, relative to his price points, it's not like he's a guy that's got close to a 40% carry, but sitting below, sitting just below 30 is not that bad for a mid-7K pitcher. Only 159 ISO given up. Now, he's still giving up a lot of fly balls, still giving hard contact, and over one and a half homers per nine. But as a lefty versus Seattle, this is one of the best matchups you can ask for. They're striking over 27% of the time versus lefties. WRC Plus is below 90, and the Woba and OBP is below 300 as well. So... Like an Andrew Heaney here quite a bit. He can be a very hit or miss pitcher, and his ERA is below, is above five this season, which is going to probably scare some people. But the underlying numbers are a lot better. A run lower, exits at below four, Sierra's below four. So, so I am liking Andrew Heaney here quite a bit. Plus, he is a heavy favorite, and he allows us to get a little bit more flexible with our offensive pieces today. But I think that's pretty much it for the pitching for the most part. Quite a few guys to talk about, so hopefully that wasn't too long winded. But you know, pitches are pretty important. <laughs> I mean, they're pretty much the most important thing. For DFS. So with that being so, we'll move right over to the bats. And as per usual, we'll start with the catcher position and move around the diamond and hit the outfield as well. And up top, we have Salvador Perez, 5400 bucks. So I have an expensive guy here, mid-range guy, and a cheap guy. So it just depends on your roster construction here. But I do like the Kansas City Royals here quite a bit versus the Baltimore Orioles. They're going to be throwing Keegan Aiken on the mound, a lefty who is pretty average at best, can be very below average at times. We've seen him get beat up a couple of times this year. And I think the Royals are in a very good spot. One of my more favorite stacks on the site. Their team total is currently sitting at 5.6, which I thought was pretty high for them being at Kansas City instead of Baltimore so they're looking pretty good to me plus Salvador Perez has been one of the best hitting catchers in baseball he just showed off in the 
you know, the home run derby where he had what, 27 or 28 homers. And it kind of sucked because they interviewed Pete Alonso the entire time. I mean, we heard nothing about Salvador Perez until he was like at the very end and they noticed he had a lot of home runs, but he was absolutely crushing it in the home run derby. But I mean, so far this season, his ISO has been above 220 and loving the right on the matchup here versus Keegan Aiken, just a not very good pitcher. So do like all the roles here quite a bit. And you'll see a couple of them throughout the video. Will Smith, 4,600 bucks. Fair price point. I could see him being very chalky here. It's in the middle of the order for the Dodgers. They have a team total, of, massive team total of 6.6 right now. I would not be surprised if that got closer to 7 as the day progresses. But he's ISO sitting around 200 this season. The Dodgers are definitely the top stack on the entire slate here. On the road, course field, guaranteeing nothing at bats. Best place to hit. Antonio Sotatella, average pitcher at best. So sign me up for all the Dodgers here. Will Smith is not overly expensive. And if you're looking for a cheap catcher for Toronto, it could very well be Reese McGuire here. He's a lefty on righty matchup here versus Jordan Lowes. Jordan Lowes is a guy that will allow power, will allow hard contact. He's not the absolute worst pitcher in the world, but he's not very good either. And he's pitching on the road. And the Blue Jays have a team total of right around six today. And I know Reese McGuire is not a very good hitting catcher, but he's betting close to 280 this season. And the ISO is now above 100. So things are going in the right direction here for Reese McGuire. But he's just a cheap piece of a really good offense. Dropping out of first base, we have Vlad, 6400 bucks For obvious reasons, I don't think I ever have to tell you guys to play Vlad, but if you got the money for him, great. But he is massively expensive. I mean, this is the most expensive I think he's been all season long, if I remember correctly, but it's deservedly so. His numbers are off the charts. Over a 320 ISO this year, over a 450 Woba, which is insane, and a 332 batting average. And plus, it's a very good matchup versus Laos. I already mentioned this, so we got the money for him, great. If not, I don't think it's the end of the world, but George Stack and Blue Jays find a way to fit him in. And then Carlos Santana, 4700 bucks. Like I just mentioned with Salvador Perez, I like the Royals today, and I specifically like the righties versus Keegan Aiken, and he's a switch hitter, so he'll have the platoon advantage here. And then Pavin Smith, 3300 bucks. So I was kind of failing to find a cheap first baseman that I like. I was kind of looking at Rowdy Telez. He plays for the Brewers now and not the Toronto Blue Jays. If he played for the Blue Jays, it'd be a different story. But the Brewers, I don't know, I'm not loving it. Plus, he's been terrible this year. And Pavin Smith, while he hasn't exactly been great, his numbers are at least a little bit better. And Kyle Hendricks, he's, you know, he's kind of an annoying pitcher to use bats against because he's not terrible. He doesn't suck or anything, but... He doesn't strike out a lot of guys, but he doesn't usually get blown up. So he's one of those really annoying pitchers where you kind of want to stack against him, but you kind of don't at the same time because he just doesn't typically have those games where he gives up like six plus runs. So kind of annoying here, but their price tags aren't that bad. So I do have some interest in some of the Diamondbacks. Could be a decent contrarian stack on the slate. Team total below four and a half here. So I can't imagine a lot of people will be on them. I do like this price point quite a bit. And then dropping out of second base. A couple of expensive guys here in Max Muncy and Marcus Simeon. Just kind of depends on who you're stacking today. Max Muncy's in course field. That's their matchup versus Sensatella. And Max Muncy's been good this year. 413 Woba, 289 ISO, 165 WRC plus with over a 400 OBP. I crush his lefties. He crushes his righties. I prefer lefties versus Sensatella, but you can play pretty much anybody versus him. And they're going to get to the Rockies bullpen at some point. And if you're looking at the Rockies bullpen this year, it's been one of the worst ones in the league. If you're looking at their team XFIP, Open wise, it is now sitting at 4.8, which is going to be worse than any of the teams that we're talking about here. So if they can get some style out of the game early on, which they probably will, it's going to get even better here for the Dodgers. So obvious reasons, I do like Max Muncy, Marcus Simeon. Just give me anybody and everybody versus Jordan Lowes. He's got pretty similar splits versus either lefties or righties pertaining to Marcus Simeon here, and he's been great all season long. And then David Fletcher. 2900 bucks. He's kind of been on fire recently. He's had a couple of games in the 30s, and he's dirt cheap leading off against Chris Flexen. I mean, he's not the worst pitcher out there, but I wouldn't really fault anyone from wanting to stack against Flexen or just taking one off versus him. And looking at Fletcher's numbers this season, not a guy that hits for power, but I mean, 309 batting average, 314 Woba, only a 10% carry, doesn't really walk a ton, but he's going to make contact, and he's dirt cheap at 2900 bucks. and if you want to get some expensive pitchers in, you want to stack the Dodgers, I mean, David Fletcher is a really good salary relief option, and if you play David Fletcher, you can still play Max Muncy, just move over to first base. And then dropping down to third base, we have Justin Turner, 5500 bucks. Again, prefer the lefties versus Sensatella, but you can stack this entire roster. He's been good this year, batting over 300 with a 385 Woba and around a 200 ISO. And then dropping down to Manny Machado, I'm not, like, in love with the Padres today. Eric Fetty is a Average pitcher. Last time he faced the Padres, he kind of got beat around. I think he ended up scoring like negative eight fantasy points. But I think the Padres make for a decent contrarian stack today because I don't think a lot of people are going to be on them. Everyone's going to play the Blue Jays. People are going to be playing the Royals. Everyone's playing the Dodgers. A couple of other decent spots as well. So the Padres could get a little bit overlooked, but I wouldn't mind stacking against Fetty here. Plus the Washington bullpen. 
I wouldn't say a spectacular, and you know, there's plenty of good bats in this Potter's offense. Jake Cronenworth, Batiste, uh, Trent Grisham, Tommy Pham, Will Myers, I mean, the list goes on. It's a pretty good offense, so they're going to go a little bit overlooked. I think they make sense in tournaments. And then Kevin Biggio, 3500 bucks. he'll probably end up being the chalky guy here to try to save some money. He should be batting you know, a little bit lower in the order, but close to the middle. 3500 bucks. and those numbers aren't super impressive, but just a cheap left and righty matchup here versus Jordan Lowes, getting cheap exposure to a good offense. Dropping on a shortstop. If you ever just have the money for Tatis, I mean, it's always usually a good idea to play him. He's got some of the best numbers in baseball pretty much across the board. He crushes either righties or lefties. So a matchup versus Eric Fetty obviously doesn't scare me. Kind of like the similar play to Manny Machado, but just a little bit bumped up. And then I'm going to be honest, it's either going to be Tatis or Gavin Lux for me because I don't really see myself playing a mid-range shortstop today. You could always throw in Bo Bichette, but I have Zander Bogarts in here just because of the price point. Team total around five here for Boston. He's not the greatest pitcher out there. He can't struggle with power at times. So 400 bucks seems like a decent price point for him. But to be honest, it's probably going to be Tatis or Gavin Lux, depending on my roster construction. But Gavin Lux here, 3200 bucks. Yes, he gets the lower portion of the order here, but just trying to get cheap exposure to a team total that's around seven today. Like his numbers obviously aren't that great, but I mean he's dirt cheap and he's on the Dodgers, so can't really say that for a lot of the Dodgers pieces as they are pretty expensive for the most part. I'm going to drop down a couple of teammates here. We have Mookie Betts, Cody Bellinger. Both are fantastic plays here. If I could pick one over the other, I'd prefer Betts just because I feel overall safer with him. But Bellinger gets to let there any matchup versus Sotatella. But to be honest, he has been pretty awful this season. <laughs> like His numbers are a 176 batting average, a 126 ISO, and a 70 WRC plus with a strikeout rate close to 30%. Mookie Betts, his numbers aren't that great either, but they're still a lot better than what Cody Bellinger has. Plus, he's leading off. You get probably an extra at bat there so i'll just take mickey bets for both are phenomenal plays and then george springer five thousand dollars it just depends on who you're stacking if you're stacking dodgers i'd play bellinger if you're stacking the toronto blue jays i'd probably play george springer there but he's shown plenty of pop this season a limited sample size as they did miss a decent portion of the season but i pretty much like everybody here versus jordan Lyles. a couple of potters outfielders here and tommy fam and trent grisham Good matchup here versus Eric Fetty. Both are relatively cheap. Tommy Pham should be in the leadoff spot. Trent Gisham a little bit lower in the order, but hitting right in the middle. Gisham gets the left and righty matchup, so he might grade out just a little bit better there, but both are great plays at their price points. And AJ Pollock, 3900 bucks. Prefer him versus lefties, but I mean, just cheaper exposure to the Dodgers here versus Sensatella. Michael Brantley. So I don't really have much interest in the Astros, but at his price point, I'm always going to put Michael Brantley on here just because he's one of the best pure hitters in baseball. Plus, you guys know I just love Michael Brantley. So anytime I can get him on here, I will sneak him in. But he's kind of just, if you want to get different, you could stack the Houston lefties here. I mean, you got guys like Kyle Tucker, Michael, or maybe like a mini stack because it's really only like Kyle Tucker and Michael Brantley. You could always full stack the Astros, but that's not something I'm really excited to do on the slate versus Dylan Cease, who is a pretty solid pitcher. Can't struggle at times with power, but does have a good K rate. But Astros don't really strike out anyway, but. Kind of mainly just interested in Michael Brantley here. You could throw in Kyle Tucker as well. Alex Verdugo, just a cheaper lefty here versus Armand. And then Cole Calhoun, if you want a dirt cheap option, he is absolutely free. So if you're spending up for pitcher day, you're getting some Dodgers in, you're going to have to find some value in Cole Calhoun. I mean, he's recently came back. He's just a very cheap left and matchup here versus Kyle Hendricks. Plus, we're in Arizona, which is always a nice place to hit. And Cole Calhoun has always had some decent pop versus right-handed pitching. So... Don't hate it at that price point. You could also use the leadoff guy for the Braves. He's only $2,000, maybe $2,100, but should be leading off with no Ronald Acuna, so he's another option if you don't like Cole Calhoun. But with that being said, guys, I think it'll be it for the video. So I hope it was helpful, and if it was, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me over on social media if you feel like that's something you would like to do. And if you want to help support the channel over on Patreon, link is down below in the description for that if you want access to all the extra content. And last but not least, this video is sponsored by Price Picks. You can get a free money bonus up to $100 using code CPEN. You can use the link down below or you can go to pricepicks.com. But it's a really fun website. It's Daily Fantasy Sports Simplified, just you versus the projection. You can bet over or under on the points, like over Vlad, 9.5 points, or over a certain amount of hits or runs and things like that. So check it out. Free money bonus up to $100 instant deposit match using code CPEN. But I think I'm going to stop rambling. I'll get out of here and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day.